Knesset's second term in office on the way. The issues of the rule of law keeps coming up as lawyers in the land disagree on the modalities and approach of the executive arm of government towards rights of citizens. And Mr. Omoyele Shore and Ibrahim El Zaki to get, get a refusal in court. They did not get favorable decision from the court over issues relating to fundamental rights and further incarceration. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Shingo Kimbale at our Lagos studio in Nigeria. As the different political parties prepare for the Kogi and Bayer's elections, the ruling APC at the center has released names of those it has screened and today shifted a date for the Bayer's governorship primary from Thursday, August the 29th to Saturday, August the 31st, 2019. The party has also adopted a direct mode of primary. These uh, for the bias uh, primary, this the party says, is in line with the written request of the bias state chapter and majority of the stakeholders in the state. However, the Kogi primary will hold on Thursday as planned. That is tomorrow with the indirect mode of primary. And here are the names of those the party uh, screened and certified fit to run first in Kogi state. And uh, they've cleared nine people to run and seven people were not cleared in Kogi state. For Bielsa state, uh, the direct mode of primary has been adopted for Bielsa state and it, the primary will hold on Saturday, the 31st of August. One person was disqualified, the former INEC rec in Cross River State, Dr. Franklin Brie, and uh, six people were screened and certified fit to run in Bayelsa State, including the former Minister of State for Agriculture, uh, Senator Heineken Lopobiri. Well, let's go to some of the uh, court cases which happened earlier today. Federal High Court in Abuja uh, sat over two prominent cases bordering on the defense of human rights involving the proscribed Islamic movement in Nigeria and the convener of Revolution Now protest, Omoyele Shore. Justice Evelyn Maha, who presided over the two suits, refused hearing the motion filed by Mr. Shore, challenging his detention for 45 days by the Department of State Services. The judge declined all the applications filed by Mr. Shore's counsel, Mr. Fem Falana, and sent the case back to Justice Taiwo Taiwo for further hearing. On the suit involving the Islamic movement of Nigeria, the court fixed September the 11th to hear the motion filed by the IMN asking the courts to vacate the ex party order it gave on July the 26th, prescribing its activities in the country. Everyone, get a seat. It's a one-hour stretch of the program, so we shall be dissecting the issues of the rule of law, President Muhammad Buhari's second time, Nigeria's democracy, and the future of Nigeria's judiciary. Let's get talking about this one. A lot of people have been talking about it, especially at the Nigerian Bar Association Conference, which is happening here in Lagos. A series of issues are coming up on how things are handled in the country regarding the rule of of law, uh, court orders, and the processes within our courts. So, quite interesting conversation. From yesterday's uh, session, uh, there was a, a, an interesting part of that uh, session which might form part of our conversation tonight on the program. And I'd like you to listen to some of the sound by. It was this session that was moderated by a former president of the Bar Association, Mr. Olisa Agbakoba. Take a listen to what the senior advocate of Nigeria had to say on the rule of law in Nigeria. In the matter of unknowing, what happened? We waited for the Bar Association, nothing happened. We waited for the... Uh Unfortunately, the NGSC is busy doing other things than fighting for financial independence. Because I feel that if the judges are truly free, the rule of law will have meaning.
That's the view of Mr. Olisa Bakuba, a former president of the Bar Association. So when the minority leader of the Senate, who was asked to speak on some other issues relating to what he discussed, uh, Senator Abaribe came to the podium. He raised a critical issue on the case of the former CDN, Walter Onogen. Hear him. Matter of Onogen, what happened? We waited for the Bar Association, nothing happened. We waited for, the, uh, uh, for their fellow judges, nothing happened. And everybody was looking at us. And what we were waiting for, because the law is very clear, you cannot remove a chief justice without coming to the Senate. Yet, it happened, and nothing happened. Certainly, there were reactions, and they came in droves. Uh, but we will only give you two of those re reactions, uh, and these are from uh, eminent senior advocates of Nigeria. They disagreed. And you know those who I'm talking about. One from senior advocate uh, Mike Ozekome and senior advocate Femi Falano. Both of them are not on the same plate on this one, on the case of the former CDN on our end. Take a listen first to Mike Ozekome, and you hear the reply from Femi Falano. Since members of the bench are defunct and they cannot protest by themselves, Taking on the kind of role we saw lawyers do on the 9th of March 2007 when they went to the streets in Pakistan and shut down the entire country because President Pavas Musharraf removed unjustly and unconstitutionally Mohammed Musharraf, the then Chief Justice. Can't we do more than we have done? My learned friend talk about Pakistan. I mean, was come here? Yes. The chief justice then was not removed for corruption. Only, sir, can the NBA morally, morally, go to the street to fight for judges who have millions that they cannot account for in their accounts? So that set of... Uh something in the minds of critical mind Nigerians, those who think, how is the executive arm of government operating? Uh, well, the executive arm of government has a big role to play. The Attorney General of the Federation, the Minister of Justice, Aboka Malami, also reiterated the perspective of the Buhari-led government on what they are doing regarding rights of human, uh, the, of uh, rights of citizen in the country, and uh, the, the national security, issues of national security. Those have been, uh, been the kind of conversation we're having tonight. We allow our, our panel tonight to weigh in on the matter and we get a sense of where all of these divide their stands on the issues. Let's get talking, everyone, shall we? Let me know what you're talking about because you can go to our Twitter handle and let's get your opinion in and what you believe the Buhari government and the approach to the rule of law is. From Abuja studio, my panel is seated already, uh, is a senior lawyer also in Nigeria, Mr. Karadia Ajulo. And uh, there also is uh, a senior citizen, uh, um, Mr. Buba Galadima, is a member of... Uh, the, the PDP and a member of a spokesperson of the uh, PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much for coming on to the program. Let me begin with um, Mr. Ajulo. You heard those arguments of some of those who think that maybe the right things are not being done under this administration. There are uh, varying opinion on these. For those who do not agree with what the, the way Amana this government is handling things, what would you say to them? How would you re react? Uh, well, one thing we have to know very well is this. This is the season why everybody seems to take position based on the political affiliation. But whereas, whatsoever that we lose most is Nigerian, if we refuse to tell them the truth. Yes, when we talked of rule of law, rule of law, it is if you, whatever thing you do, particularly as a government, is within the ambient of law. And I want to believe that this, this present government, in as much as some of us, some people may, may see what they are not doing right, but in some instances, rule of law is well followed. Like the statement made by Jose Kome, I'm sorry, 
uh, with due respect, that is the most unfortunate statement to make with, among the committee of lawyers trying to twist facts, particularly on the issue of the former Chief Justice of Nigeria. Forgetting the fact that it is that happened to be the court of law, that is code of conduct, that through the Esparte order that it should be so removed. And this is what the president follow. For anybody now to now raise that, it is something that we should, we should ask ourselves. What matter most is this? Rule of law is there, and it is for the government to follow it. Anywhere the government refused to do that, most of us, we always go all out to, to ask that the right thing should be done. And that is why when we looked at all what, what has been happening, even for the, for the mere fact on the issue of the removal of the CGN, have already talked about that. And with the two or three instances of the, of the national security advisors, including the Elzazaki, all of us at the end of the day, if not because Elzazaki traveled out of the country, that is when Nigerians got to know that Though the, the court, the court in, in the case with the federal government has already released him on bail, but he still has some cases to answer with the one with the Kaduna State government. And if at the end of the day, when the Kaduna State government acts that he should go, he should, he should, he should, he should be released on bail on medical grant, you can see what the government quickly do. Then on the issue of the uh, former national security advisor, this matter got to Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has already affirmed that what the National Security, Ad Security Advisor is trying to do to come to court to ask for, for that, at, as, as he, he, can, he, he, cannot, he cannot receive such a reprieve. So the question we should ask him is this. What, which, what are we now saying that the, whether, whether the government has already flouted the, 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 the law as it is? I want anybody to challenge, to challenge me on that. To, to, to really bring the, this thing out, where the government has done that. So I, I think we need not, we need not overheat the polity. We need not try to be sentimental, particularly when it comes to this. Like I keep on saying, immediately after election, we should not, we should forget, we should forget about polity. We should, politics, we should be discussing policy. And I think that this is what we are discussing, we should be discussing now, but not that we should be using politics to play rule of law. So uh, the lawyers are discussing how we can further <clears throat> Uh, our democracy, how uh, we can entrench uh, rule of law in Nigeria. Let me allow uh, Malama uh, Boba Galdima to react to what you said, uh, Mr. Uh, Ajulo. Uh, uh, Alaji Galadima, with what Mr. Ajulo said, how would you react uh, to what he said, considering this government led by President Buhari and the approach to the rule of law? Well, Kirian, uh, I want to thank Chief Ajulo for having the opportunity and the chance and the time to be here in this uh, studio. And uh, I would also want to say on the final submission he made that what we should be talking about is the policy of government. What the nation or our viewers should ask the chief who is a legal luminary as described, is what is the policy of this government on anything on earth? They have no direction. They have no policy. So what shall we be discussing? We will be only be forced to discuss their actions in and in action. A lot of people have discussed have said many things about the Chief Just, former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogi. But this very station should go back to history and bring out what I have said about what this government could do and would do and has done in the first place because they have organized to rig the election, which was proved in court before the tribunal, they refused to sign the electoral law. For two years, they were brick batting with the National Assembly. Having done that, they said, what is their obstacle if they rig this election? They saw Onoge as a victim of circumstance because Onoge is one of the three justices of the Supreme Court that refused the bribe and gave judgment against the then government of President Musa Eradua and gave judgment for General Muhammadu Buhari. Therefore, they saw him as a dangerous species that must be removed. 
And again, on the eve of the election, 2 a.m., six hours to the start of the election, they postponed the election when the opposition deployed their resources. And now, we were before a tribunal set up by those they brought in. And two issues in that, tri in that tribunal they could not prove. The president has never attended any school. He has never had any certificate. And there were never accreditation in six states of this country and partial accreditation in three states. When you demolish that, the matter is, is in public pavilion. Are this government following the rule of law? No. Have you seen the crackdown on social media operators that were supposed to be against government? One lecturer, very prominent social me, uh, uh, whatever warrior, Abu Hanafi Dadiata, was picked up on the authority or on the instruction of a governor from his house in Kaduna. For one month now, his whereabouts had not been disclosed. Is that what the law says? All right. If the guy is yeah. accused of any crime, uh, um, he should be taken uh, to the court Galadima, of law. Alaji Galadima, apologies. Let me pause you for a moment. Uh, we have um, with us on the program the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Sina Advocate, Mr. Paul Usoro. He joins us uh, from a hotels on the Victoria Island in Lagos. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Osoro, for coming on the program. Let me quickly ask you straight, uh, straight away. Lawyers have asked that the Nigerian Bar Association should uh, come up and act as a body of lawyers, as a conscience in the society when things are going wrong. What have you discovered at this year's conference that you think might be pivotal to the sustenance of the judiciary and the rule of law in Nigeria? Well, there's plenty that we have discussed that we believe we have achieved that would be useful as far as the rule of law is concerned. Um, there are areas in regard to the rule of law that were highlighted that most Nigerians and we generally, particularly those of us who are able-bodied, we take for granted. Um, uh, one, one of the th innovations that we did in this year's um, annual general conference is we had a special plenary on rule of law and this is something that we intend to have every year and we had a very distinguished um, panelists and um, panel members and there was this gentleman who unfortunately became disabled during this um, Liberian war and he mentioned his experience and the experience of disabled people who do not have access to justice because of their disability. Um, he gave some graphic instances, for example, somebody who is deaf and who may be driving and the policeman stops him and he's not hearing the policeman. And of course the next thing, maybe the policeman shoots or um, stops him eventually and drags him and says he's simply pretending to be deaf. So that was something interesting, a new perspective that lots of people do not think about, the challenges that disabled people have in regard to access to justice, and of course, the degradation of the rule of law in that process. That is simply one of the issues that came out, and it's something that we would take seriously as far as the NDA is concerned. But we also talked about rule of law in the context of the independence of the judiciary and the independence of the judiciary you may bifurcate it into two the freedom for the judge to have a mind of his own without somebody having to dictate to him exactly how his judgment or his thinking should be and then of course there is the aspect in regard to funding um, and there is that general perception that sometimes um, those in authority believe cases that government has interest in 
it should go in a specific way, a particular way. And if it doesn't go that way, then they feel that the court is compromised. This is actually a degradation of the rule of law. It erodes the independence of the judge to have an independent mind. Mr. Osoro, let, let me pause you for a moment. Apologies, because we need to take our conventional break. But when we come back from this break, I would like to ask the president of the Bar Association, uh, in the case of the corruption, fighting of corruption of this government and the thin line of the rule of law, how does he think we are faring as a nation? He's going to answer that when we come back from the break. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on the program. The attention of the nation has shifted into the conversation around the rule of law, the approach of the executive arm of government, uh, the manner in which the judiciary is also administering these activities that come under the spotlight. That's really when the conversations around that came up at the Nigerian Bar Association Conference, which is currently holding in Lagos. So we are talking to the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Paul Osoro, who is at the Victoria Island in area in Lagos, talking to us on the program. And also on the other side of the part of the country, uh, in Abuja studio, is uh, Alaji Buba Galadima, who believes that this co uh, government is not uh, uh, following the rule of law. But Mr. Ajulo disagrees with him. We'll go back to our Abuja studio in a short while. But let's uh, quickly go back to Mr. Paul Usoro, the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. And I'd like to ask you, uh, Mr. Usoro, from the perspective of the Nigerian Bar Association, what do you think is happening in the executive arm of government, especially in the first four years of President Buhari? Do you think that the rule of law is being adhered to? Well, um, that question cannot have a yes or no answer. Um, there are instances that the rule of law is adhered to. But there are other instances also where there is a, a very serious erosion of the rule of law. Uh, and so it, it's better to look at it from a case-by-case -case basis rather than simply giving a blanket um, response. Now, um, there are instances that the government does not obey court orders. That clearly is an erosion of the rule of law. There are, of course, also some instances that the government obeys court orders, which, of course, promotes the rule of law. But what we advocate is that there should be a standard practice of obeying court orders, for example. Now, I would also mention some other, in, some other um, instance where there's erosion of the rule of law. Um, I, you said something about uh, allegations of corruption. Now, the principle of law is that any person who is accused of any crime is innocent until proven guilty. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we tend to believe that people who may be accused of crimes are guilty and the government promotes it, its agencies promote it, they are guilty and now need to prove they are innocent. So rather than the basic principle of law, which is what the rule of law stands on, that a person is innocent except proved guilty, we change it and in the process destroy the foundations of the rule of law by having, for example, to go on media trial, which is a fairly common thing among some of the agencies, and present someone as guilty, even when the trial has not proceeded at all. Now, that is an erosion of the rule of law. Um, there are other things in regard to the rule of law that one can talk about. For Absolutely. example, um, if you put somebody in incarceration even before you have a court order and even and if you contrived it and you have uh, arranged that somebody has to be locked up and which is also a fairly common thing that happens with some of these agencies they obtain orders that puts people away for quite some time um, that is an erosion of the rule of law 
people are entitled to their freedom. And what ought to be done is that there should be a proper investigation of crime by the authorities before you even decide to invite the person, before you arrest him. But in Nigeria, you do the opposite. You arrest the person, you harass the person, you lock him away, and then you start looking for the evidence against the person. You couldn't destroy any more than that the basic principles of the rule of law. And by the way, let me complete that. Human rights, the principles of fundamental rights, freedom of the person, they are hinged on the rule of law. If you destroy the fundamental rights of people, then you are essentially degrading the rule of law. You are no more having a, a system or a country that is governed by laws. You are uh, more having a system that is governed Mr. by Osoro, laws. Mr. Uh, Osoro, let me quickly ask you for a moment, quickly. Uh, the executive arm of government is statutorily obliged uh, to enforce the law with powers to arrest and investigate. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism uh, against the executive arm of government, and it does have this statutory role, uh, especially a government of President Buhari, for example, that says he wants to fight corruption. Has it come to a warring state for the Nigerian Bar Association on the activities of the executive, or is it just okay? You know, um, this, this business of having to fight corruption, um, during this conference, somebody made a very apt point about it. And, and that is that sometimes it is used as an excuse to infringe on people's rights and to degrade the rule of law. I will give you my own perspective. If the government is seriously interested in having to fight corruption, um, the significant way that you do it is to look at those loopholes in the system and make sure you plug those loopholes. The business of having to be, I mean, I find it very ridiculous that the EFCC, for example, its index for having to establish that it's fighting corruption is how much money that it recovers and how many cases that it wins in court. That doesn't stop corruption. On the other hand, if, for example, you find that um, petroleum subsidy enhances corruption, then government needs to look into it. If you look into it, then you remove, you block that particular oxygen that gives life to um, um, corruption. And you could replicate that example in so many other instances. And I find it rather strange that we don't look at those causative factors. We don't look at how to plug those causative factors to make sure that the, the, what gives life to corruption is not there. And we are looking more at, oh, I have been able to recover X amounts. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't stop it. And the truth is, we all know that it doesn't stop any of these things. Or we have been able to get 500 cases. And some of those cases, the process that you get them they are less than honorable, they are less than proper. Uh, and that by itself also speaks to the issue of the independence of the courts. By the time you make it look as if this is a mission that government must convict whether or not there is evidence, uh, and, and, and again, that, that also speaks to something else. Because you are so focused on necessarily proving that you are fighting corruption, by having to give the number of cases. That is when the, the possibility of having a miscarriage of justice or, in fact, abusing the processes, the prosecutorial powers that you have, and in addition, even having to formulate or trump up charges against people simply because you want to get a convic conviction, that's when those temptations come up. That's when those incidents happen. That is when you destroy the foundations of the rule of law and you destroy the rights of people. All right. Yes, we can fight corruption, and I agree we should fight corruption, but we should actually focus very much more on, on that, uh, the causative factors and how to 
make sure that the oxygen is not even there for corruption. All right. Uh, I will come to you, uh, Mr. Osoro. Stay with us because there is a big question on how the judiciary needs to purge itself. What is the Bar Association doing about that? I'll come to you for a moment. I want you to ponder on that. Let me quickly run back to our Abuja studio with my panel there. Uh, let me allow Mr. Ajula to quickly respond to what Elijah Galadima said. His response to you was that this government does not respect the rule of law. How would you react to that? Well, I, well, like I said earlier, I want to believe that I didn't even have Elijah Galadima in mind in my opening speech when I mentioned that the time for politics should be over. We should be talking of policy. And he, apart from that, Elijah Galadima mentioned issue about what is what happened in court. Unfortunately, I will not be able to really make any response to that, particularly since that he is not a judge. The judge will the very soon, the, the judgment of the court will clearly come to know who is saying what is, what is it or what is not. On that, I would really like to go that. And I believe we should be careful and we should be mindful of some of the things we put to public there, particularly making a very sweeping accu accu accusation against some people. I'm very sure, I'm so happy that Elijah Galadima was even given a chance to even address the court, to present his testimony in court. And there are some questions that was put to him in that court that we today, there's no answer to that. For example, this is the man that you have been with since 2000, as far as we are concerned, from the time he started his, 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 his ambition to rule this country from 2003 till now. Three consecutive times, Elijah Galadima has been with him is saying he is the best person to rule this country. How come within the twinkling of an, of an eye for him now to say no? And again, when we talk of rule of law, I want to let you know that even the last speaker, that is the president of the, of, 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 of our Badass Nigerian Bar Association, happened to be one of the testimony of the rule of, of, of the rule of law we are talking about. He, as I, I know that he's, he's so sure of that, is facing corruption charges. But despite that, because of the presumption of innocence or in, 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 our, in our jurisprudence, in, jurisprudence, in our law, that, that, that they still presume him innocent. That is why you still see, despite most of those corruption charges, still leading the, leading the bar till today without any, any, any strength, without any issue, even still addressing Nigeria. And that one shows the freedom. And fi finally, some people talked about the, about, the, about the impartiality of the judiciary or whether the executive has been able to overrun the judiciary. But what the best, best way to know that by the time you check what happened in Zamfara State, this is where the leading, leading, where this is where the political party, that leading political party, lost the entire, entirety of all those presented for election. Even it happened in, in, in River State. If the government of the day really mm -hmm. wanted to breathe, in, breathe on the judiciary to ensure that they, 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 they couldn't move further, the, 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 the government should have been able to do that. But, they gave, but, they, but the judiciary has been given a free hand. That's why they can rule against this ruling party. They lost in River State. Um, I, I, I was a national secretary of a political party before, so I know what it means for you to allow your ruling party, your party, to rule the entire state, even not one state, not two states, almost three. And some people will still talk about that some, there is no independence of judiciary. I believe all this talk, it is more about politics. It is, it is, I, we, we, we seem to be subjective when it, con when it concerns us. And I want to say one thing. Nigerians seem to always believe that they need to flow where they are, they, they are more comfortable. This is not an issue of being comfort comfortable. This is taking an impartial view of what is <coughs> happening in our politics. And... I think the, the whole thing speaks for itself. Alaji Galadima, uh, is he a case, like you said, a case of the fact that it does not favor you now, now that you think that the rule of law is not being adhered to? React to that. <laughs> well, Mr. Mr. Ajilo should know that if I'm looking for greener pastures, I would have stayed with the president because I know the president better than him and better than virtually every Nigerian living today. Uh, but uh, I'm fighting for uh, the cause of the people. And uh, I see him laugh and smile. I'm waiting for a time he will cry because he doesn't know who he's supporting. That Nigerians have not seen anything in life about this guy who is the head of this government. And uh, it, is, it is good to know that during my testimony in court, I had been with the General Buhari from 2002 January up to now as I speak. But I never knew that he didn't go to school or he didn't have any certificate. 
until when the military secretary came out on national television to say that his documents are not with us. And uh, you had also seen one of his closest friends and course mate in the military, General Paul Tarfa, who came out to say that the military is not a bank where you go to bank your certificates. That closes that chapter. The issue is not whether the man has certificate or has his qualification, but it's because he lied under oath. And the judiciary was on trial. Now, it is not about PDP, not about APC, not about Atiku, not about Buhari, but that the man swore under oath that he has certificates, which he could not present at the court. It is for the judges now to tell us. They are the people on trial, not us. And my testimony is there. It, has, it was never punctured. When they tried to do it, my daughter is working for Buhari. I asked them for the slip of her payment. None of them presented that. They asked me whether I wanted, because I wanted to be minister, and I couldn't get, that was why. None of them said I spoke to him to say that I want to be minister, and Buhari didn't appoint me. And I will say that successive governments from, 2000, from 1999 to, to date had offered me ministerial appointment with the juicy cabinets as other Nigerians would want to say. And I didn't tell because I believe in the struggle for the common people and making, now, rule of law. There is nothing, this government is intimidating the judiciary. You've heard in the social media, you've heard in the, in the print media that certain friends of this government visiting judges, trying to, to mold their opinion on the cases before them. We've heard that. We, it will be proved when these judges gave their own judgment because the public know how this case went. The entire world, including America and observers and Europe and Commonwealth, know who had won this case. It is not an issue for us. As far as we are concerned, we presented our case. We are convinced. We have proved our case. It is now left to the judiciary. If they want to erode their powers, so let it be because they know exactly what happened and they know what the public think of the situation on the ground. The world has not seen anything. They have started get crashing into people's houses. Look at what they had done to Atikus Illo, Babelele. They first arrested him for money laundering and they asked him to bring the books of Atikus companies and they gave a specific time. The boy said, no, let's go back to when the company started. And they refused in EFCC. Let them call me. We will present those documents to them because they know that some of the key people of this government were beneficiaries of Atiku's wealth. And they want, don't want to be exposed. All now, right. because the man took some money, sent, sent some money through banking system to Beru, the change man, and somebody collected that money to give another person. The man is being arrested. What is the erosion of the rule of law more than what we are saying? Okay. Uh, El Gadzaki. Elijah, Elijah Galadima, we, we need to take, hold on, Elijah Galadima, just a moment. We need to take another break. But when we come back, I'll allow you to land on that thought and uh, let Mr. Ajula respond to what you have said. Don't forget, we still have the president of the Nigerian Bar Association with us. We'll be back on President Muhammad Buhari. Nigeria's democracy and the rule of law, the future for Nigeria. We come back to discuss more. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. We are at the home stretch of the program now. Uh, let's quickly go to uh, Mr. Paul Usoro, the president of the Bar Association. I'll come to you uh, in a moment, Mr. Ajulo. Let's take uh, Mr. Usoro's uh, final comment on the program uh, so that we can allow him to attend to some of his program uh, this evening uh, at the Nigerian Bar Association. But uh, the big question here, if you, if you hear what Mr. Farano said, Mr. Usoro, about if... Millions of narrows are traced to account of judges. And issues of corruption erased again in that sense. So a lot of lawyers are asking how the judiciary, especially those on the bench, are going to purge themselves or purge itself, uh, the judiciary itself. How are you looking at that and what are you doing specifically on that? 
goes back to what this goes back to, this goes back to what I said earlier. Our law does not state that a man is guilty before, and then you need to come and prove his innocence. Let me presume you indeed the line has gone off. Okay, uh, we'll come back to you as soon as we're able to resolve uh, that. Uh, let's go back to our Abuja studio, and let me allow Mr. Julo uh, to quickly respond to what uh, Alaji Galadima, uh, at this part of the program, we're looking at a way forward. The President Buhari's second term in office, the rule of law, but quickly respond to what uh, Alaji Galadima has said about this government, and he made allegations of hounding of opposition and dissenting voices. Well, like I said, one thing we should think of is policy, of the policy of the government. And I want to assure you that any time, though it is expected for some people to go astray, if it's expected of, that, that is part of human, human nature to go astray, any time the government seems to go astray, Nigerians, particularly lawyers, particularly some of us, will certainly go all out to defend that and to ensure that such violation is to serve. I want to raise, raise one issue. That's why you notice on this issue of Shure, some of us are really come out to say, look, what happened is not issue of treason. Nobody will plan treason. Nobody will plan such revolution of that as expected to advertise it. If that is the way, then we should ask why the reason why the likes of Babangida, Abasha and Co did not advertise that revolution. We believe that what is happening to Shure there's a need to reverse it. There's a need to ensure that the young man has his freedom. And I always believe that in any, any, any time, any, 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 any part or agent or department of government is going wrong, the courts should be there. I've been in courts so many times to, to ensure that this, this is done. There are many cases. Kasim Afegwa is always a friend of the house, always on the house here. We defended him when the, when the, when the police seemed to seem to misbehave in, 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 in trying to violate his right. And the court, Nigerian court, at the end of it, even asked that he, the, the police should apologize and paid him some money. So that money, as I speak, is, is yet to be paid. But these are the instances that the law is there, the, the institution is there, Nigerians should continue to be vigilant. And like I said, when we talk of the rule of law, the adherent rule of law, we need not sit down to be waiting until when there's violation before we talk. That is why we must continue to guide the, 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 the government. We must continue to tell them. We must continue to point out several instances where they seem to go, go astray. And I believe with that synergy, we will achieve the best for Nigeria. Okay, uh, let me go back to Mr. Paul Usoro, the president of the Bar Association. Your final comments, uh, Mr. Usoro. Uh, the question e here is, is there a self-sanitizing mechanism yes. that the legal family and the legal community is uh, building up to ensure that first and foremost, there is sanity within the judiciary and the legal community uh, such that it's not found wanting when the issues of rule of law come to play. Um, yes, now I will combine that with um, what you had said earlier before the line went off. Now, what you mentioned earlier was that there was the comment by my good friend and, and brother, um, Femi Falana, that millions were found in a judge's account, and that is evidence of corruption. Now, those are the two, if you can put the two together, because what the second question you're asking is, is there a way of sanitizing so that you do not have incidents like that? Now, my answer to that is fairly simple and straightforward. Um, the law, as I mentioned earlier, is that a man is presumed innocent until he's proved guilty. Now, in this case, let us presume and let us say that money was found, millions were found in a man's account. Isn't he entitled to present his own case, ex explanation, before you pronounce him guilty? Is the court not entitled to hear him out? I believe that it will be prejudging a case if you decide that that 
by itself is evidence of corruption? I don't think so. I would like to hear the explanation first, and then let a judge determine whether that explanation makes sense. Now, in the case of judges, there's actually a process. It's already there. The Judicial Council has, is established, and part of what it's supposed to do is to investigate these cases. And where it is established that there is what might be like fraud, or, I'm sorry, criminal uh, incident, then the Judicial Council is supposed to pass on um, that report to the relevant authorities. They investigate, and if it's necessary, they prosecute the person after the Judicial Council has removed the person from the judicial office. That is the process. So it is there. Now, if anybody indeed or any agency has concrete evidence of that corruption, then what they ought to do is take it to the National Judicial Council. And then the National Judicial, I'm a member of that council. I, I would like to hear, yes, I'm not involved in the disciplinary cases, because the Constitution says the uh, Nigerian Bar Association should not be involved. I think that provision should be amended, All right. by the way. Uh, Mr. Paul Usoro, we must leave it at that, but we must sincerely thank you for your time this evening, and we'll allow you to quickly go and attend to some of the business of the Bar Association Conference ongoing in Lagos. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Paul Usoro, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, President of the Nigerian Bar Association, talking to us. Let's run back to our Buja studio with uh, Alaji Buba Galadima and Mr. Ajulo. Uh, we are going to conclude our conversation now. And we're looking at what the president did in the first four years, and now going into the second four years. Uh, you've raised a lot of uh, issues, Alaji Galadima, and you do not believe that this government is uh, adhering to the rule of law. What, in your mind, would be your concluding thoughts on the program on the way to go? Well, uh, Kiran, let me first uh, uh, commend uh, Chiva Julo. Uh, because he, uh, in this one, we agree, because he said, we, even, if, even if the government is doing good, we must keep them on their toes so that they do not infract into people's freedom. Sir. I accept this 100%. Thank you, sir. But I also want to uh, say something about what uh, uh, Paul Us Usoro has, uh, has, uh, has uh, said. The man, they are not studying the government we have in place or the head of that government. We have a head of government who believes that he will first accuse you and it will be your duty to prove yourself innocent. I am not a lawyer. I don't intend to be one in the shortest possible time, even though I aspire to be one before I die. Yeah, I there is no place no country in the world where you are accused and you prove yourself innocent. The president has consistently stand on this premise. And now that he has the complete judiciary under his armpit and have the National Assembly inside his pocket, we Nigerians are in trouble. Because we may not know one day we will wake up, the National Assembly could make a law right. saying that the government have the right to accuse you and it is your duty to go and prove yourself innocent. All right. Let's I like not it, Yeah. We, we, yeah, we, we need to go now, but I will allow Mr. Ajula to give his quick intervention and a response, then we, sh we close the program, please. Quick one. Quick one, Mr. Ajula. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. When we talk of rule of law, it depends on the law that the people of that certain area has given themselves. Today, Nigeria has given themselves the, the constitution in the sense that you have to be the presumption of, of innocence is on your side, irrespective of whatever you have done, and that is what is happening. In some country, you may even be asked to come and prove what, what you've done. But as, a tea, as I speak today, unlike what Alaji Kaladima said, such has not happened. Though Alaji Kaladima claimed, of course, he is the president of the, he is the friend of the president. Whether the president has already, whether in their bedroom they've discussed about that is what to do, but as of as today, that one has not been able to happen. It is, it is still in the realm of speculation, as Alaji Kaladima is saying. But like, I, like I'm saying, 
The president has put teams in, on, on ground to ensure that for smooth administration of this country, right. and that one has, has, has been going on. And like I said, Nigeria needs to be vigilant to ensure that things work well. I, I must sincerely much. thank both of you for coming this evening. Mr. Kayo Diajulo, a lawyer, and uh, Alaji Buba Galadima, a spokesperson of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much for uh, the gentlemanly approach to the conversation tonight. I must sincerely thank you for coming on this evening. But that's what I show everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure Kimbale. Bye for now.